Good evening, everyone. I'm going to tell you, the ones who resist until the last sentence of this speech will have the right to take pictures. I learned that Indians lie. <laughs> they say, President Mario, this is the last picture. <laughs> 1,500 pictures afterwards, I'm still taking the last picture. <laughs> but I like taking pictures. <laughs> I think, who is going to take pictures with me in 2030? <laughs> Maybe Kamal and Sonal and Shaker and Rashi. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we are, we are very fleeting. We are very ephemeral in Rotary. And uh, it reminds me of that American poet Robert Frost. You know, seize the day because your day will be gone. So I live each day as if it was my last one. So I carry no regrets. Since July 1st, when I left home, I haven't been home yet. I will return home on October 20. I still have 19 more days to go before I see Brazil. But it is a mission. I do it gladly. You will never see me complain. I wasn't obliged to run for president. I ran on my own will. And if I don't do the best I can, I have the impression that somebody else might have been elected and would do a better job. So if I'm privileged to have been chosen by the nominating committee to lead Rotary in 25, 26, I want to do the best job I can. And to do the best job, there are some qualities that are prerequisite, especially if you are a Rotarian leading volunteers. And one of those prerequisites is the first question of the four-way test. Is it the truth? If the first question is responded negatively, don't even go to the other <laughs> questions. It's, it kills 80% of the answers. When I mean being true, I don't mean being rude. You can be true, and yet you can be gentle. You can be polite. You can be respectful. I see myself as a doctor whose patient comes and says, doctor, I would like to know what is happening to me. I'm not feeling well. I have a problem. And I would like to be as truthful as I could to identify the problem and to find a medication, to prescribe a treatment. So part of our rotary world has an illness. That illness, that sickness, is called stagnation. Some people, especially staff in Rotary, tell me, Mario, don't use this word. <laughs> use stabilized, <laughs> which is the very same thing, but forgetting the problem. <laughs> stagnation means that since 1996, we've had the same number of Rotarians, globally speaking. Consider your business. 
There are some business people here. There are some professional leaders here. Consider that today you are making as much money as you were 30 years ago. <laughs> Would you consider yourself successful? Hardly. So there's no such a thing as stabilized. You are either moving forward, progressing, or you are falling back, regressing. <laughs> the world changes. If we don't follow on the footsteps of change, the competition runs behind, crosses us, passes over us, and moves. So I'm going to present you some interesting data. How do I move this? Okay, now we have it. Those are the three scenarios that I have. This presentation I do in every country I go because it's a fact. I don't sugarcoat the numbers. They are what they are. I presented this PowerPoint in Toronto, Canada, where membership is plummeting. In San Antonio, Texas, same thing. Spokane, Washington, same thing. I presented it in Germany. Germany is growing. But I, I am fair to all concerned. <laughs> Growth, you see the numbers over the last 20 years. Taiwan, 127%. India, 103%. Philippines and Korea. In absolute numbers, India is by far the best performer in 20 years. And you might ask me, why 20 years, Mario? Because I don't believe in electrocardiograph numbers. You know what I mean? Who is a doctor here? <laughs> What does the electrocardiograph do? Up and down, up and down, up and down. That is not of interest to rotary. We like a healthy performance over the long term. I see the trend of the curve over 20 years. That's what interests me. So this is the curve. Growth in Asia, all of those countries, not coincidentally, are in Asia. I won't get deeper into this. There are any reasons, economic growth, incorporation of 400 million people to the middle class in India, a revolution in Taiwan, they are growing very rich, whatever. But it is what it is. Stagnation, Brazil. Brazil has had 50,000 members for the last 20 years. It's not acceptable. I told them, get your behind working. <laughs> I call it the process TBC. It's not the Boston consulting. It is take your butt off the chair. So the TBC process in Brazil is starting to show results because I said, if you don't grow when I become president, <laughs> I won't visit you. <laughs> it's a good threat, isn't it? And then there are countries which are in decline. They're bleeding. They're hemorrhaging. They're losing thousands and thousands of Rotarians every single day. And I show that to the Americans, they get really surprised. Why aren't we talking about this in the US? Because the US is the birthplace of Rotary, it's where it all started. 20 years ago, there were 385,000 Rotarians in the US. 
Today there is 275. They lost 110,000 members in 20 years. That is 60% of India today. For the whole country of India. I tell them the numbers, they get really, wow. I said, it's a wake-up call. If you don't buck the trend, if you don't reverse the curve to go upwards, in 10, 15 years, India is going to request to remove the headquarters from Chicago to New Delhi. <laughs> Can you imagine India with 400,000 members, the U.S. 120,000, what will happen? <clears throat> and this is the direction of things today. So I tell them up to their faces. Most of them appreciate honesty. Some of them don't like the bad news, but that's their problem. If as I, as a doctor, recommend you to take a medicine and you don't take, it's your problem. I did my job. I detected, I diagnosed it, I showed you the way, I prescribed you, I said, eat less fat. <laughs> and then the next day, you were eating fat. If you don't want to follow the prescription, it's your choice. But I'm responsible to a point. And this is an interesting charter because it kind of explains the first one. It doesn't explain 100%. No, nothing explains 100%. But there is an interesting statistical correlation, and the mathematical people here will understand what I'm talking about, statistics. When one factor is closely aligned with the other factor. So this is the number of clubs charter, chartered in the last two years. We don't have 23, 24 yet, but I'm going to add uh, after next week. We should have the numbers yesterday, September 30. But look at why India is growing. 658 new clubs in two years. India has 4,600 clubs and change. I think 4,600 and something. But you created 658 in two years. That's why you're growing, <laughs> right? There's no magic. There's no magic, it's just TBC. And I showed the Americans said, you chartered 106 clubs and you have 8,700 clubs and you chartered only 106. The average number of clubs in the district in India is 113. In Brazil, it's 110. In the United States, it's 47. And I tell the Americans, I say, you've got to have kids. Oh, Mario, we have to work on retention. Retention does not depend on you. Retention is a decision taken by the club. If the club has a bad environment, people leave, even if I ask them over Zoom not to leave. <laughs> oh, Mario, uh, President-elect requested me to stay in my club, but it is a shitty environment. <laughs> I go, what can I do? What can a district governor do? The club has to create a culture of belonging, of welcoming, of engaging, embracing people. <clears throat> There's not much I can do. So when people say, the main problem Rotary is retention, I said, uh-uh, that's the easy way out. We have to work on retention, yes. But that, we only go to until page number two. 
We can inspire, motivate, and challenge, but we cannot do the job. Our job is to create new clubs, period. And that's why you're growing and England is disappearing. GB and I, 26 clubs. Great Britain and Ireland have an average age. They used to have average age of 79 years old, average. So you can imagine some of the members met Paul Harris in person. <laughs> there must be guys that with 135 years old, right? They're older than Rotary. How can you have an average of 79? And a couple of years ago, a director from Great Britain said they had achieved a remarkable feat by reducing the average age to 72. That's great news. You're going to postpone your death by seven years. <laughs> so this is unacceptable. It can't continue like that. And if there is someone who has to point and appoint the disease, it's me. It's my job. I will not outsource it to anybody else because I have the credibility to do it. I'm the president-elect. If I don't say it, who will say with the weight that I have? I won't ask my district governors to do something that I'm not willing or qualified to do. So how are we going to go about this? I like those two phrases because they kind of aligned with what I'm proposing next. Um, this is a French poet, Paul Valéry. The trouble with our times is that the future is not what it used to be. <laughs> the future used to be so easy. <laughs> Today is so complicated. <laughs> you know, I used to tell the future some things would take 10, 15 years to change. Today they change in two or three years, right? I have seen change here. I visited India for the first time in 2008. It was a completely different country. You may not realize because you are in it, but as an outsider who visits India every year in the last couple of years, I can see it happening. I saw new ice. I'm an observer because when you want to learn, you observe. I see new airports, new highways, new buildings, fancy buildings like they would be Miami. <laughs> I see new cars. I see new businesses. If we want things to stay as they are, things will have to change. It seems a contradiction, but it's not. If we remain the same, you'll just get older and die. <laughs> if you want to keep up with the times, you have to change because the environment changes, your community changes, culture changes. India is going through cultural changes. I can tell. Some habits that were deeply ingrained in 2008 are being questioned. That's the so-called modernity, whatever that means. <laughs> but it is happening, whether you want it or not. Society doesn't ask for Rotary. Society doesn't care about Rotary. We care about society. So we have to be in tune, in sync with the changes of society or we will become irrelevant. Innovation is key to this process. I only mention three ways. I, there are a lot more, but I'll mention three ways. Innovations. Dur during the, the, Shekhar has been gone, has been through this. When you, when you are appointed president, <clears throat> you submit your name. There are between 10 and 20 candidates. They select six, 
They invite the six for a personal interview in Evanston with the nominating committee. <clears throat> there were two delegates from India in my nominating committee, Bhaskar Shokalingam and, and Sam Patibanda. Sam. So if anything goes wrong with my tenure, you call them. <laughs> I'll give you their cell phone number. You, say. <laughs> you elected a nut <laughs> to run Rotary. But during this presidential interview, the first question is, if you are elected president, how do you promote new club formats to enhance membership? Membership growth is not a problem in India, but it's very acute problem in some places of the world. Because, for instance, in the United States, the competition is tremendous for time, for younger minds. They have a lot of options. They are the most open society on the planet. Admittedly, they are. So we are competing for younger minds. They are not caring much about Rotary if we don't show what we do. So I did a little research and found out that only 9,000 members worldwide belong to satellite clubs. Satellite clubs are more flexible. My wife belongs to a satellite club. Come on, you know her. I invited her 40... I've been married... Jesus Christ, <laughs> with the same woman. <laughs> my father said something, I, I, I remember now, my father said something to me, he said, son, do not divorce, because you change from a known problem to an unknown problem. <laughs> yeah. I follow the old man's advice up today. So, I've been married to Denise 43 years now, and I invited her over and over again to join my club. She never would. So when I became director, I said, honey, come on. You are now a professional. You're a real successful real estate agent. Why don't you become a rotary? She said, eh, I don't like to go every week. I don't have the, that passion that you have for rotary. I like the work, and I like the fun. I like the friends. I like to travel with them. I like to have lunch with my friends, my fellow Rotarians. And I like the work that you do, because this is the heart of Rotary. So they formed a satellite club in my dining room. Eight women. Can you imagine eight women? Eight women can start a revolution. <laughs> and they conspired against my club <laughs> and said, we will set up a satellite club, but it has to be a satellite of your club. And my club is very traditional. When I talked to them, they said, satellite club? Inadmissible. This is a second grade club. We are 75 years old. We have four permanent projects. We have blah, blah, blah. We have the judge, the mayor, the blah, blah, blah. We will not lower our bar. I said, guys, your wives are joining the club. <laughs> so that raised their attention. <laughs> if you don't let the club be chartered, you'd better file for divorce. <laughs> so this club was chartered. My club has 110 members. It's not small. But today, this new club chartered by my wife and the district governor's wife, Alice, has 57 ladies. <laughs> is the fifth largest satellite club in the world. All the other nine are from Korea. Impressive, huh? I learned none of that because I had to study to be the president, you know. 
they give us stacks of paper like this. So my club went from 110 to 170, practically. In, and they're very happy. They don't want to become an independent club. I told them, why don't you, you know, spin off and go for yourself? We don't like rotary red tape. <laughs> too much paperwork, too much bureaucracy. We don't like bureaucracy. We just like to have fun. They did a meeting during a fashion show. And I was talking to her last Tuesday. They were meeting in a brewery. That is the kind of rotary that attracts people, right? <laughs> meeting in a brewery. And they have focusing projects. They have partners like everybody wants to be partnered with the president's wife's club. <laughs> So she doesn't have any difficulty finding partners. This is a new form of making Rotary happen. The other one is continuity. Um, I think that we are a miracle by definition. When you talked about executives in any industry and you say Rotary changes management from the president to the president, club president every single year. I said, you're still alive? <laughs> Because we are, we, we're not supposed to exist. Continuity is obvious in, uh, in a business. You don't sack people that are performing. But we sack people that are performing. <laughs> because of our one, one year term. So we get rid of people who are doing well. There are some people who we would like to be out on the first month of their tenure. In 30 days, we are fed up with a guy or the girl who said, shoot, and we have to support and stand for 11 more months. But there are some good guys we change every year. So how do you continue somebody's work? That happens at all levels. Shaker knows that, the board level. One board cancels what the other board has decided. One governor interrupts the program of his or her predecessor. Especially because of envy. <laughs> because of ego. <laughs> I will not corroborate what my predecessor started. I'll kill it. <laughs> what a pleasure. <laughs> so continuity is a big challenge. And continuity is easier said than done. Because continuity means that when you're making a decision that will impact your successor, you have to be kind enough to call him or her and say, I'm making a decision that will have repercussions in your year. What do you think of it? I already done that with Sanku, by the way. And he has been confirmed two weeks ago. I called him last week. I'm about to make a decision. Bah. What do you think, Sanku? Wow, Mario. Well, think about it. I'll be back with you in a week. This is continuity real. The dictatorship is you establishing the rules and telling your successors. You follow the rules that I establish. That's not continuity. That's dictatorship. That's autocracy. So we have to change our mindset in Rotary. It's not easy because the top has as many ego problems as the club presidents. I won't get into more details, but <laughs> we need a long-term plan. For membership, for instance, now we have a three-year ruling plan. And you were saying that this, this, this district is exemplary in terms of engagement of one governor, 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 elect, governor, nominee, governor, blah, blah, blah. That's the way to do things. If you have a problem, they have to solve the problem before it reaches the floor. Because if it reaches the floor, it gets into the rotary gossip wheel. 
And Rotarians sometimes like to see leadership fighting. <laughs> and that's destructive. So we have to avoid this. We have to be, one word only, respectful. If we show respect, we will enhance continuity, we will enhance diversity, we will solve many problems if we show respect. Partnerships, that's the third and last one. Lessons learned from polio. I'm not a genius, I just read. I read reports, I read numbers, I read facts, I read data. Um, do you think we could have taken the effort to eradicate polio by ourselves? I'll give you one number, that's it. We have invested 2.7, now it's the 2.8 billion US dollars. 1.1 from Bill Gates' pockets, and 1.7 from your pockets. But the total cost of the program is 21 billion US dollars. Where are the other 18 or 19 where did it come from? Last week I was in Toronto, Canada. The Minister of Foreign Relations, an immigrant from Somalia called Hassan Hussein, became the Minister of Foreign Relations in Canada. A tall, a guy that's taller than me, black guy, very educated, very polite. He was there at the conference to sign for a donation of 105 million US dollars to polio. So besides being good at taking money out of your pockets, we are much better taking money out of somebody else's pockets, which is the government. Who has the money? The real money is in government, right? So the US government, the Canada government, the government from Japan, from the developed countries, the rich countries, they have to help the poorer countries. Now, why don't we use this partnership concept to reach out to professional associations, lawyers, engineers, doctors, architects, physicists, whatever, professors, Why don't we use the same concept? We, I was the president of Brazilian Printing Association. We had 27 members on the board, only three were Rotarians. Three, 10%. And we were a conglomerate of leaders because if you're working in a trade association, you're representing your state, your business. You're representing thousands of jobs. So you have a collective mind. The same thing applies to the bar, you know, comprising the lawyers or the doctors in a medical association. Uh, you engineers, when you are in the builders and the construction association. So those people are qualified to belong to Rotary. Why don't we reach out to them systematically? Why don't we approach them? Are we ashamed? Don't we have anything to show? Yes, we do. Are we ashamed? No, we are not. Our values are consistent. Diversity, integrity, fellowship, leadership, and service. Probably the same values that they have. So think of it. When you're expanding Rotary, think of connecting with the professional associations. That's where the talent is the talent that we need. I do not recommend fishing out on the streets for Rotarians. That's not the way to go. That's an easy fix. It's like cocaine. It will destroy you. My father, that was not my father, that was my grandfather, another wise guy. He said, grandson, the longest way between two points is the shortcut. Every time you take a shortcut, 
you fall into a trap. So don't take shortcuts when you are inducting new members in Rotary. Do it the hard way. Do it the hard way. Go out and look for the right people. Don't make anything that's not real. It won't sustain itself. It will die. If it's fake, if it's phantom, if it's a ghost, it will not prolong. It will not survive. So the only way to do it is to do it right. It takes longer. Requires a lot of work, but 20 years down the road, you will still have your Rotary Club and your sponsor. To finish, I would like to leave you with a, with a, a reflection about leaders. I know three types of leaders. And I want you to identify yourself, which type of leader you are. The first type of leader is the one who makes it happen. The second type of leader is the one who lets it happen. And the third type of leader is the ones who were surprised by what happened. <laughs> what type of leader are you? Thank you.